world, it's your city girl. I'm Leslie St. Julian and I'm your host on today's episode on Sanks Your Sank TV. Today we are in Brooklyn. That's right, we are downtown at 33 Restaurant and Bar. If you want to get some good Haitian food, I mean really good, come down to 33. But none of this would be possible if it wasn't for our sponsors. So we'd love to give a special thank you to Send Wave, the new way to send money to Haiti and IT Music Hall of Fame. Thank you for your sponsorship. And last but not least, if you want legal advice, please click into Blaise Law Office. Now, let's go into 33. Welcome everyone to Sanctuary Sank TV. And today our special guest is Tadia. Hey, hey. Yes, so she's an artist. And I'm gonna let her tell you a little bit about her. And let me just tell you, she's hailing from the thoroughest borough of NYC. That's right, BK my borough. BK all day. BK all day. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Leslie. We're so happy to have you. Yes. Yes. So here at Sanctuary Sank TV, we yeah. like to start off slow and just walk people through and then we go deeper. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the beginning. Tell yeah. us who you are. Um, yeah, so my name is Tadia. Um, I turned my name into an acronym. It means turning old dreams into adventures. Oh, that's cool. Um, and it's kind of a motto that I live by, at least I try to. Okay. Um, I'm multifaceted. I'm a journalist by trade. I have my master's in journalism. Um, so I produce Monday to Friday, and then I'm a superstar on the weekend. Ah, well, you're always a superstar. <laughs> my goodness. Yes, I've read a little bit about you. Yeah. And I've done my research yeah. you know, as a good journalist should. You, know? um, so right. you have a very, very ex extensive and impressive background. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I started doing music. I pivoted from journalism to music in 2018 okay. um, and really the only reason why was because I was in the right spaces okay. doing the wrong thing oh, um, right and so it was right actually thing. at a concert where I um, was interviewing Maxwell and I was like wanting to talk about music and like dying to talk about my passion for music and okay. I couldn't oh. and really because I was there as a journalist covering the, the concert and I was like yeah I yeah. have to start doing my thing yeah and good. so that's really when I started like recording um, I had a very musical childhood growing up my okay. mom had me in all sorts of programs okay. um, I went to Juilliard I studied the trombone I played oh, for nine beautiful. years yeah, I literally went through all the great music programs that New York City offers. Okay. Um, and it's been super dope, um, just the transition, because I've been able to kind of use the contacts and the friends and colleagues that I made as a journalist. I'm like, okay. hey, I actually sing now. Okay, <laughs> so you're mixed. I've listened to your music. Yeah. Beautiful, Thank dope, you. fly. Like that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so not, she's a Haitian American, so yeah. that's, you know, not to be forgotten. Yeah. Um, but your roots and your music, your vibe, it's like her. R&B, mixed with a little Afro beats, yeah, mixed, a little, mixed with a little soul. Yeah. So where, where would you, would, would you put your music in a box or would, how would you categorize it? Um, that's a great question. I think it's kind of tough because I started and I didn't want to put myself in a box. So because of that, I've kind of just been exploring, which I, I do music for fun always first. Okay. And so in that search for finding my pocket and finding where my music can live, I've been kind of experimenting with all the stuff that I love to listen to. Okay. So that's really why it has that mix. But of course, I always say by way of Haiti. Okay. So I'm toujours jouer un petit créole, un petit compas, something yes. that'll be like, oh, yes. I heard a little. I heard it. I heard it. a little. Yeah, down low. Yes. Bissé va, bissé va, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and I, I was I'm very intentional about making that decision. Okay. Um, a lot of people, especially in the Haitian market, ask me, like, when are you going to make compas? And yeah. are you going to make compas? I'm like, guys, our culture is so diverse and so it rich is, is. and I think that other spaces deserve to know about us right mm -hmm. and I think that just I, I want I want it to be very strategic about how do I kind of put my Haitianness 
in my music. And I, again, just like um, Sang Su Sang, yeah. slow pacing, slow right? Pacing. Slow pacing. Okay. So that's really where I'm at with um, with it. And I don't know if I answered your question about genre, no, you but did, you, you know, did. I'm still kind of finding my pocket. Yeah, you're not in one lane. I mean, you're yeah. vocally trained. You have an extensive background and exposure. You yeah. have a classical background. Yeah. I mean, and she's been someplace <laughs> that it is hard to get to. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute yeah. when we come back. One of the most impressive parts about you, um, so a very popular place called Carnegie Hall. Um, <laughs> this young lady has had the pleasure of stepping onto that stage. So the question was always, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And the answer to that is practice, practice, practice. So she's ready. <laughs> she's been ready. She's been there, done that. So yeah. how did you land that opportunity? Yeah, so really and truly, been there, done that is literal <laughs> in the sense that that was part of the things that I was doing as a child growing up. Like I was in like the Summer Arts Institute, which is this program. And if you're in New York City, you should check it out. And if your kid is musical, put your kid in there. Oh my mom God. was that mom trying to find every free opportunity oh for me to goodness. just be in that cultural musical space. Okay. Um, and which is un is not something you hear commonly in our in our culture, our right? Yeah, and yeah. so shout out to you, mom, for yes. literally seeing me and hearing me in the shower singing and just oh, knowing beautiful. that I should I could you know reach high heights if she exposed me to those things. Yeah. So one of the programs that I was in, Summer Arts Institute. We were like a, a, a chorus, okay. and we sang, and we traveled, and we performed different places, and so one of the places was Carnegie. Carnegie Hall. Okay, now yeah. that's not an easy feat, and that's a that's an honor to step on that stage. Yeah. I haven't yeah. made it there yet. Yeah. <laughs> so wonderful. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about um, your influences. You did say that you listen to a lot of different genres, but who specifically are some of the ones you look up to? Who inspires you? Huh. Um, it's tough to say who do I look up to, um, just because I don't know that I look up to many, ah. um, but I do look out to many, and okay. I I'm, I think. It's important to say that just because I'm inspired by my musical colleagues, people like um, LMA, May, mm -hmm. Her, okay. Jasmine Sullivan, mm -hmm. like these are like our modern day Sade's, oh, our modern yeah. day Laurens, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, so again, a mixture of my mom, again, she came here and my mom always had music on, oh. and so I would listen to her play Sade, okay. and so I was listening to that kind of music from early on, and I think I was really moved by just just the, the chillness of it and just okay. the ability to hear the voice carry oh. in those like genres in like mm -hmm. neo-soul. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, Gang Kompa, I'm in Brooklyn, we in Flatbush. I know, you there's can't, reggae, you can't there's reggae, there's soca. Yeah. Like it's, it's hard not to get sucked into all those different musical spaces. Okay. Cause that's what we hear all day. That's what we hear all day. <laughs> so what, what gets your pen going? Uh, what, what's the first thing that, that makes you say, okay, I think I got a song in me. It's time to write a song. Yeah, um, I think, and this is where the journalism comes in, right? Because as a journalist or just all the training that I got in school from that, mm -hmm. I've literally mastered how to become a storyteller. Mm -hmm. And actually one of the challenges is um, transitioning from being a journalist to a songwriter now. Um, it's like, all right, how do I write this in a way that's not so structured and formal, right? And so that has been a challenge, but I find that when I... I'm out and about, if, something, if someone says something, if I'm watching a movie, or if I hear someone say something in a way that kind of lights this light bulb, I'll write on my notes. Okay. And then when I have my creative time at home, I'll literally just say, ooh, I wrote, I don't know, The Grass is Greener. Okay. And so that alone will inspire me to write the story. Okay, so everything all around you yeah. could, could kick off literally. a verse any literally. minute, and you'll go, I'm gonna write about that. Literally, even my latest, my okay. last song that I dropped, Yo Yo, okay. um, it was just super random because I was like, whatever happened to yo yo's? Like, I remember I'm a 90s kid, so okay, we used to play with yo yo's all the time. Yeah. Like, whatever happened to yo yo's? Like, do kids even play, play with, with like. That. So then I just started with one word, yo-yo. Okay. And then next thing you know it, I have this whole song out of yo-yo. So oh my goodness. I literally do it for fun. I love it. <laughs> so th would you say it comes easy to you? And once you start, do you finish it? Or do you ever have to put something down? Like, I'll come back to that. Oh, I 
because I, I write poetry. Yeah. So I have to finish it. Otherwise, the moment is gone. It's gone. If I come back to it tomorrow, it'll be a totally different poem. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I get that. That's definitely a challenge for me, finishing, just because sometimes I'm just like, oh, this is just a quick moment. Yeah. So I'll expand on it. I have this song that I started at the beginning of quarantine. And then I didn't finish it until like this year. Okay. So some, some records, depends on the record. Some records, it takes time to build them out because okay. life is literally being yeah. communicating, communicated through these records. So yeah. life has to happen yeah. to get the, to finish it, okay. you know? So it depends. It depends. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, so I do know you're taking a, a specific hibernation period to hone in to some to give birth to some new things. Yes. You're cooking up some stuff I am. and we are waiting. <laughs> so can you give us a little idea of what, what we might be able to expect soon? Yeah, sure. It's definitely different. Um, different in the sense that all the singles I've been putting out, I think was like my attack on like commercial, like what's hot, commercial, what's hot. Okay. Um, and not to say that I didn't see myself in those records, but mm -hmm. I, if when you meet me and know me, you'll know that like yes, I like to have fun, but that's like on the weekends. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Monday to Friday, I'm super chill, okay. super down to earth, and I feel like the new music I'm working on is really reflective of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's necessary. Yeah. We're gonna come right back and we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Yeah. Let's do that. Welcome back, everyone. So you were getting into what you've been working on during your hibernation period, and I know you mentioned that you intentionally will not be performing until yeah. you are ready to come back out your cocoon. So yeah. you're, you're preparing. This is yeah. serious. You're focused, and yeah. um, that's very rare, and that's yeah. so unique. Yeah. Um, so you, you have a strict regimen when it comes to your creative process. No, for and sure. So, yeah, so you mentioned um, before the break that you reeled back a little bit now yeah. on this new thing that we're going to hear from yeah. you. You've, you've taken a, a little bit of... Yeah, I think it was coach. necessary. Um, when I first started, I literally just hopped into it and then I was doing a lot of research about the business side mm. um, which I felt was the only way that I can take my career serious because I had to see that there was a viable business with it okay. so almost tricked myself a little in the sense that I wanted to see like can this move can I get to certain spaces and I did that okay. and so because I did that I'm like okay that part you can do that now focused on the on on the actual songs, okay. um, and that's really how you, I can build my fan base. And I think that even right now, a lot of people hear about me, they see me, but my fan base is still creating. Like I don't even know what the full identity of my fan base is because it's still growing, right? Okay. And I call them my tribe. Oh, right. um, and sure. I think it's growing because again, I still haven't put out the music that I most connect to. So okay. how can I have a fan base? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So with that being said, I feel like um, the hibernation time was essential just for me to kind of pull back. Okay, Tadia, you're presenting yourself to this public as this person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being intentional about what parts of my life I want to share because it's so much yeah. happening as just to, to commit to being an artist. It's yeah. very taxing. Mm -hmm. So because of that... Um, being in that season just allowed me to say, okay, I want to share this thing. I think that people will connect with this. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, just, again, thinking about all the things that I'm going, there's a lot of changes happening in my life. I okay. just became an auntie. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, and too. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to all the aunties. <laughs> Can't wait to be a rich auntie. All but. Right, right, right. <laughs> to spoil that. Right? Yes. But yes. Um, no, so it's been just a lot of like, okay, like what, what's my message? What's okay. my story? Okay. Um, and I've been able to focus on that in that hibernation season. Okay. That's very good. Um, that's dedication, and um, that's real positive. Now, yeah. do you have like someone that you pour into, like someone who's your soundboard, or a mentor? Oh, yeah. You can run things by because it's really important for us, even as artists, to have a good support system. Yeah. Um, because life is still lifing us, okay, <laughs> <laughs> while we're trying to go through the creative process. Yeah. And then sometimes it's good because we pour it in, right, yeah. to the music and you can hear it. Yeah. And um, a lot of artists, you hear their song and you're like, oh, she was right. going through something during this right. one. Right. 
or you know it's exciting but still it's like oh she was she was that life was good right so it's all reflected right um, like you said but is there someone that you trust that you can say look when i really want to make that final call that final decision on um, you know should i let this out the bag that you um yeah to? i would say there are a few people okay. um i thank god for my family i literally have Aww. the best family ever oh, i would not cool. be able to do this without them um they are so supportive in every in every way like even just knowing that, okay, if I'm going to go out there and just risk it all, yeah. I know I won't be sleeping on a train. You know oh, what I'm saying? Well, I won't be. So that knowing that, that they're supportive in that way, my mom, yeah. my uncle, um, they're, I would say they're my immediate mentors. But then again, in the music space, my vocal coach, okay. um, who I just connected with actually recently in December, his name's Conrad. Okay. Um, he's super dope, very esteemed in the space. And Again, just like I connect with people first. Okay. And that has been um, kind of like my safe goal okay. um, where I'm like, okay, hey, I can connect with you. That means that I feel the synergy first. And okay. then I'm like, let me share this very vulnerable thing with, about me or my okay. music that I haven't shared with the world yet. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Yeah. And I like to have a diverse amount of people that are okay. like listening because it's different. Yeah, you know, it's, it it's different feedback. So I'm getting kind of ideas from different people from different spaces okay. um so yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to do to to go into that vulnerable space with the world yeah you know and then yeah. once it's out it's out it's out you can't take exactly. it back exactly so deciding you know even what you're gonna sing about and talk about and when people really like start to recognize what's she talking about you right. know and you wonder like okay what are they gonna think, think are they right gonna, but you know, sometimes we have to silence the noise. Yeah. We just have to, um, because you are not alone. Yeah. And there is somebody, if in, even if it's one person, person that right. you're connecting to, that's like, that song was written for me. Yes. You know? And if you yes. can reach that one, you then my job is job. done. Exactly. Hello. Exactly. So we're going to come right back. We're going to go a little bit deeper. Yeah. And we also want to know what you're working on sure. and where people can find you. When yeah. are you going to come out of hibernation? <laughs> we can't wait. Yeah. We'll be right back. So the, the, the pot is cooking and it's it stirring and um, I know you're working on a lot of things. So when can we expect for you to butterfly out into the world? <laughs> so actually, um, I, my last song, Yo-Yo, that I was talking about earlier, um, I did an experiment with it. Um, and I, it was the first song that I put out without a music video. Mm. I just wanted to know if people really love the song. Mm. So between December and June of this year, I organized my own like outside tour. I called it the outside tour. I went, I went to different venues like Seafood Thursdays, all the way up to like outside. big concerts. I was outside, <laughs> right. and this is while you know COVID was in New York. I think uh. New York had a slow kind of like coming out yeah. side again thing. Um, so I was just taking the temperature of are people still coming out? What's going on? I want to see people. I want to connect with people. Okay. So um, during that tour, I just was performing my song Yo Yo. Okay. And it's been crazy, you guys. Yeah. It's it's been nuts. Like I went to Paris. I went to Chicago. I went to L.A. I went it. to Montreal and like singing and just to hear the people screaming back the lyrics to me. I'm like, oh, ooh. Yes. So with that being said, I've decided that I'm going to use all the footage that I captured from all those cities to put in my next music video, Ooh. which God willing is coming out uh, Labor Day weekend. Oh, yeah. soon. Oh, soon. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. My heart is jumped. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's kind of like you, you've documented, not even knowing right. documentary style. Right. So this is different. Yeah, wow. yeah. So I'm excited it. about that. And um, I'm working on my first project. Okay. Um, going to be about four to six songs. Um, okay. Just That's depends fun. on what song makes the cut. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm looking to put that out in December. Okay. It's kind of hard for artists to commit to like certain time commitments because life happens and yeah, all and sort things of things. change. Yeah, things change. Exactly. Yeah. But these are ballparks of, of when. Goals. Yeah. Okay, exactly. good. Oh, we're going to hear from you real soon. Yeah. And it sounds like the feedback is amazing. Yes. And she's already got the support. You've got my support. I yes. know I wanted Thank like you. one quadrillion. Uh, no. But you've got my support. I'm <laughs> Thank so you excited. so much. I appreciate so, that. Um, let everybody know where they could find you, all your social media handles, you know, all the bells and whistles. Sure. Right? 
Yeah, you can find me at Tadia, T-A-D-I-A point blank. So it's a period and an underscore. Or Tadia Music on YouTube. I love it. Yes. So Thank simple. you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. And we have to have you back. <laughs> yes. After yes. September. Set it up. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll Thank be right you. back. Welcome back, everyone, and that is our show. We are closing out here at 33 Restaurant and Bar, located downtown Brooklyn. Don't forget to stop by. Whenever you're in BK, you want to get some good Haitian food. I'm talking legume, banan, tasso corden, and soup jumu. Everything's on the menu. Make sure you come down to 33. And we want to thank our sponsors. None of this could be possible without IT Music Hall of Fame, Send Wave, which is the new way to send money to Haiti. And for your legal advice, make sure you check out the link below for Blaise Law Office. And we will see you next time. Thank you again. Thank you. Please, one more time, let them know where they can find yes. you, Tadia. You guys can find me on IG, Tadia Point Blank, um, Tadia period underscore. Um, Facebook, Tadia Music, YouTube, Tadia Music, and the website, tadiamusic.com. You can join the tribe there. All right. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Bye.